Next question is from Jeff Gilstrap. Here's a scenario. You're invited on the Joe Rogan podcast. What are the top three messages you'd like to send out to his audience with the reach that he has? Oh, yeah. Rogan's the king oh. of the podcast space, isn't he? Man, what are his numbers these days? Because I know it was like 100 million or something uh, a month at one point, and I'm sure he's skyrocketed you yeah, know, he's beyond doing like, that. Yeah, he's doing like several million per episode. I yeah, know at least. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, he's got a huge reach. Um, uh, you know, I think one of the things I would like to talk about is how resistance training really should be the go-to form of exercise for everybody. Uh, form of exercise for everybody. It's it's not right now. Um, people who lift weights tend to be people who think to themselves, oh, I want to shape and sculpt my body. I want to build muscle. There's still that bodybuilder stereotype. I mean, if you step outside of the fitness space, talk to the average person, your mom, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your neighbor about lifting weights, you'll probably co get comments like, oh, I don't need to do that. I'm not trying to look like a bodybuilder. I don't need to build huge biceps. That's not that big of a deal. The, the go-to form of exercise typically is walking, running, swimming, biking. It tends to be cardiovascular exercise. But in reality, it should be resistance training. That should be the first line of defense. That should be the first form of exercise that everybody gets recommended to do. And this is for a few different key reasons. Uh, one, there's no form of exercise that can be modified like resistance training. There is no form of exercise I can think of that's appropriate for everybody like resistance training. I can literally design a resistance training workout for someone who's paralyzed, someone who's 85, someone who's 15, someone who's mobile, someone who's terrible mobility, someone who wants to lose 100 pounds, or someone who wants to gain 30 pounds of muscle. Resistance training is the most modifiable form of exercise, especially when you use free weights. It doesn't matter how tall, short you are, or how you move. You can train any body. The second reason that I would recommend it is if you consider most people's situation in modern societies, busy as hell, but very inactive. So they're not moving a lot, but they're really, really busy. So they don't have a lot of time to exercise. And if they tell you they do, they're lying. Most people will not dedicate more than a couple days a week to exercise. I'm talking about the average person. They're also surrounded by a lot of food. So there's a lot of good food around us. It tastes really good. We, we're, we're blessed that we live in a society like that, but it also poses challenges. I'm not moving much. I'm really busy, and I got all this food around me. Okay, what can I do? What kind of exercise can I do that's two days a week that will give me the most bang for my buck? Resistance training. It's going to speed up your metabolism, It's going to, which allows you to eat more, and you don't need to do it every single day like you would with cardiovascular activity in order to reap the benefits because it directly – speeds up the metabolism. Even when you're talking about older population, it, you know, they, they lose mobility, lose strength, they have bone loss, hormones go out of balance, men testosterone levels go down, women's progesterone and estrogen, and estrogen, excuse me, out of balance. No form of exercise directly reverses bone loss, directly helps with mobility, of course, muscle. No form of exercise has been positively shown to improve hormone levels, especially testosterone levels in men like resistance training. So in today's world, with all that, when you go to the doctor or your mom goes to the doctor and the doctor says, you need to start exercising, what they should be saying is, you need to start lifting weights. Let's start you off 30 minutes twice a week and let's get going. Yeah, I think too, uh, listening to his show, as long as I have, and I've appreciated a lot of different guests he's had on, um, but there's still like, and he's brought a lot of really good guests in terms of uh, fitness professionals, nutrition experts, and had like his own debates that he's presented to give points on both sides and tries to be measured. Um, I do sense a lot of emphasis, though, on, you know, still a lot of the punishment mentality. And what I mean by that is like a lot of the guys that come on there for motivation and for inspiration. And, you know, a lot of that is led, uh, you, you know, by these crazy, badass, you know, Navy SEAL guys and people that come on there that really, you know, hype a lot of, you know, that particular demographic into uh, you, you know, working out and trying to improve their life. And uh, what's not being highlighted is how uns unsustainable that is. And and, and what we try to uh, sort of voice out is where I think he should consider like 
really like if, if we were to, to go on there, I would I would try to to hype up a different message in terms of you don't have to punish yourself. You can actually benefit yourself and do this and get all you know the results that you want by approaching it a completely different way and, and loving yourself and going into it with that mentality. And we get into the psychology of you know how we trained our clients with nutrition and and training and what a difference that makes you know for longevity and sustainability. Uh, so that's definitely something that I would like, you know, if we had the chance to really kind of, you know, bring that into the conversation more, because I just don't think that, uh, you know, he's really addressing the average person that's listening. Uh, he's really like emphasizing more to the athletes and, and the people in that uh, uh, category. Well, that's a great answer, Justin. I, I was actually looking at this going like, I don't know, because, well... <laughs> First of all, I don't think if we were going on Joe Rogan's podcast, this is how I would think about it. Like, I wouldn't go like, I've got some messages I want to make sure I get out there. Like, I literally would just enjoy the moment. The oh, fact yeah. that just having a conversation. Yeah, with having you. a conversation with Joe about life and podcasting and just shooting the shit, probably smoking a joint with him, I think would just be an, an epic, fun conversation for me. So I wouldn't go in there, but I'll play this game, right? So uh, I'll play your silly game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play this silly hey, game. You want to play the game? Let's so, the game. Uh, you know, first of all, Sal's right. We'd probably stay in our lane most of the time, which would be talking about exercise, which is where we're at. And I think Justin alluded to that also. Like, I mean, that's definitely um, our expertise is training average people and, you know, programming for them and addressing, like Justin's saying, like the the David Goggins, the Jockos, like the the type of Ben Greenfields that get the kind of extreme guests that he's had on the show when it's related to fitness. I just and the fact that he's he's attracting the masses, that message doesn't really I think apply to most of the masses. But yet that's what they're getting on that show. So I would love to to counter that uh, with you. And then a nutrition along that line too. He's also done the same thing with nutrition, like a carnivore expert, a vegan expert, a keto expert. And the truth is, like none of those one diets is great for the majority. It's more about teaching people about learning about their own body nutritionally versus like a diet. So I think we would get into that. And then third, uh, I would tell them that uh, gorilla kettlebells are stupid. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> Excellent.